We've been looking at various things associated with air pressure and how air pressure works. And I've got one more thing I want to take a look at. We know that air pushes with a very, very strong force on the outside of our body, around 14.7 pounds per square inch, something in that general vicinity. And what I want to do is I want to fill this flask up with a little bit of water. And then I'm going to place, oh, I don't need this big a card. I'll place a little bit of paper on it, and I'm going to flip this puppy upside down like that. And I'm going to see if air pressure pushing up on the card is strong enough to hold the water inside this flask. Now, you guys have done a lot of experiments and activities with air pressure, and you kind of believe in air pressure at this point, I think. So I'm going to ask for a volunteer to come up and sit down in this chair, and then I'll hold this thing over top of their head. Bob, thank you for volunteering. So why don't you come up and have a seat? Ah, that's good. That's a good spot for you. Can you swim? Uh, sometimes. Good, good, good. That might be useful. All right, so I'm going to grab this flask, and I'm going to bring it over and hold it over top of your head, and we'll see what happens. Now, you don't need to worry too much about that. So let me get it all set, because sometimes it's kind of hard to hold on to. And um, let's see, what do I want to do here? Hang on there, Bob. Get this flask upside down. You know, air pressure pushes. Uh, you never know. Sometimes, Bob, it works, and sometimes it doesn't. And this time, we'll get this over your head. And we'll hold it up there. Okay, Bob, why don't you look up and check this flask out? Hey, that's pretty Good. cool. Great. Whew. Thanks, Bob. That was terrific. You're only a little wet. Air pressure pushes with about 32 pounds per square inch. Actually, the flask I picked up could have been something on the order of about 10 meters high before the water pushing down in there would have had enough force to knock this piece of paper off. When I set this thing on here, the force pushing up, or back into the flask in this case, is considerably greater than the force pushing down of the water. And honestly, the only danger Bob has is that if I don't handle this thing quite carefully enough, I run into a little problem with it. Sometimes the attraction between the water on my hand and the water on the paper is sufficient as I pull my hand off to take the paper away from the top of the flask. So this is kind of a neat thing. In your classroom, the suspense of starting out with a tiny flask, moving it to the large flask gets kids pulled in and grabs their attention and makes it a little bit more fun. Um, there's another thing that, that I've done with this where I've set it up with not a piece of paper but a laminated piece of paper and suspended a flask of this size and hung it from the ceiling in my classroom and just left it there with a sign on it that says, do not move. And invariably, some kid comes in and pulls the paper off or tries to shake it. It flips loose, deluge of water. Usually set a big garbage can underneath it. But it, it's kind of a cool thing to work with. And you can do a lot of different air pressure demonstrations like this one, but this is by far the simplest one. And it's so quick and so easy and shows the power of air pushing up and the force of the water pushing down. 